Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror thriller films from 2023, titled Tin and Tina. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie unfolds in the early 1980s in Spain, Lola, a pregnant woman, marries Adolfo, the presumed father of her unborn child, in front of family and friends. Yet, amidst the celebration, sorrow descends when Lola suddenly experiences heavy bleeding. Rushed to the hospital, she receives heart-trending news from the doctor, her twins cannot be saved due to grave complications. Additionally, Lola's ability to have children is also gone forever due to severe internal damage. Grieving over her loss and dashed hopes, Lola finds comfort in Adolfo's constant support and in his warm embrace. Even though it's been six months since the incident, she is still depressed and often thinks about the empty cradles that were meant for her children. She even pleads with her husband to leave their home, but it isn't easy for Adolfo to comply with her demands. Deeply worried about Lola's well-being, he becomes determined to bring back happiness, considering adoption to fill the void in their home and hearts. However, despite his unwavering efforts, he struggles to convince Lola to embrace this option. One day, after a heated argument with Adolfo, she reluctantly agrees to consider adoption. At the convent, the couple encounter sister Asuncion, who explains that the institution offers refuge and education to abandoned children, strictly adhering to their religious principles and lifestyle. While Adolfo listens to Sister Asuncion's words, Lola is captivated by the enchanting melodies from the nearby church organ. Following the voice, she is surprised to discover that the talented organists are none other than Tin and Tina, seven-year-old albino twins. During their encounter with Lola, a thunderstorm suddenly strikes, frightening the kids, who believe it to be an expression of God's anger. When the children hear her intention to depart from the church, they plead for her to stay with them. Adolfo was reluctant and worried because the kids are a bit strange, but Lola really wants to adopt the twins out of sympathy, and she finally gets her husband to agree to adopt the children with her. Sister Asuncion's description of the religious atmosphere in the convent proves accurate, when the siblings express their disapproval of a song playing in the car, deeming it satanic. The couple brushes it off with laughter and cherishes the company of their children. As soon as they arrive at their house, the couple introduces the children to their dog, Kuki, but the dog doesn't seem to like their presence. Here we also learn that Adolfo works as a pilot, and the couple then shows the twins around the house. Despite her inner struggle, Lola tries to hide her unease, particularly when she witnesses the children playfully leaping onto her own children's cradles. She keeps her cool and proceeds to prepare dinner. During the meal, Tin and Tina approach their new parents, and express gratitude for the adoption. They present Adolfo with a wooden crown, and Lola with a holy rosary necklace that is believed to keep evil away. Unlike Adolfo, Lola's response to the gift is marked with an undisclosed dissatisfaction. Before dining, the twins insist that Adolfo lead the grace, showcasing their devotion to religious practices in their daily lives. Later that night, as Lola unpacks their belongings, Tin and Tina find out that Lola can't have children, so they tell her how much they believe in miracles and how many possibilities there are. The twins then explain that the numerous crucifixes in their baggage, are meant to be placed inside the house to keep the devil away. It becomes evident that Lola harbors doubt regarding these stories as she removes the holy necklace before going to sleep. The following day, Lola awakens to an unusual sound outside her window, only to discover that it's Tin and Tina playfully using their slingshots. During breakfast, when Lola refrains from saying grace, the children inquire about her belief in God. Lola says that sometimes it's challenging to believe, and so Tina recites a Bible verse, revealing that they have a unique way of seeing God. However, she sets a condition, Lola must promise not to leave her seat, no matter what happens. Playing along, Lola agrees to remain seated, unaware of what is about to happen. <laughs> to her surprise, Tina proceeds to choke Tin using a plastic bag, and just as he is about to lose consciousness, Tina removes the bag. With a contented smile, Tin informs Lola that he has prayed to God for a miracle on her behalf, firmly believing it will be granted. The siblings start attending school, but unfortunately, they become the target of bullying by a classmate named Pedro, who labels them children of Dracula. 
Distressed by this mistreatment, the kids turn to their mother for answers, questioning their own flaws. Lola, in a tender gesture, confides her own secret to them, her prosthetic leg, a result of losing her limb in a fire. Tin and Tina think that Lola's survival from the tragedy is a sign of God's help, but Lola herself seems to have doubts about this since she lost her parents in the fire. She even talks to her husband, Adolfo, about how religious the twins are, but he brushes it off as something that happened because they grew up in a convent. Later that night, as Lola engages in a playful pillow fight with the kids, she falls victim to their innocence, or, we say, insanity, once again. The twins resort to their previous religious practice, and use a bag to suffocate Lola, urging her to ask God for her desired wish. Thankfully, just before she is about to lose consciousness, Adolfo intervenes. Despite the distressing incident, Lola manages to restrain an angered Adolfo from punishing the twins, recognizing that they are just children who enjoy playing and need time to adapt. While Tin and Tina continue apologizing to their mother, offering forgiveness in exchange for punishment, their dog Kuki, driven by frustration, bites Lola on the arm, resulting in a bleeding wound. One night, the children find an opportunity to sneak into the couple's room, and catch them working hard. While they're preoccupied, Tina secretly takes Lola's medication. They proceed to mix the medicine into Kuki's food, causing it to become unconscious. Unbeknownst to the couple, the twins then perform a ritual with Bible verses to purify Kuki's soul, believing that the dog's sin was biting Lola. When the couple wakes up, they are confronted with a shocking sight, the children covered in blood, with Tina sorrowfully informing them that Kuki did not wake up. Lola is filled with disbelief and horror as she witnesses her deceased friend lying split open on the floor. The twins claim that their intention was only to purify Kuki's soul, and they were unaware of the consequences that would follow. This event becomes a breaking point for Lola, who has grown weary of Tin and Tina's intense religiosity. However, Adolfo sides with the children, viewing their actions as innocent, and suggesting they need a mother figure to help them figure out what is right and wrong according to their religious beliefs. As things spiral out of control, Lola discovers Tin and Tina walking on their knees, inflicting pain upon themselves using multiple forks as a form of self-punishment. Deeply concerned, she tends to their wounds, and attempts to make them understand that they cannot interpret every word in the Bible literally. Lola goes as far as calling the Bible a work of fantasy, explaining that concepts such as angels, the devil, heaven, and hell may not exist in the way they have been taught. However, the children's strong faith, which comes from seven years of intense religious education, keeps them rooted in their faith. On Christmas Eve, Lola suddenly collapses, and is rushed to the hospital, where she receives astonishing news from the doctor, she is pregnant once again. The same doctor who informed Lola of her infertility is convinced that her pregnancy is a miracle. Everything is going perfectly for Lola, until Tin and Tina engage in another religious conversation. Believing that Lola's pregnancy is a result of their previous ritual, they raise a disturbing question, what if God commands them to sacrifice the child, just as Jesus was sacrificed for others' salvation? <gasps> the next day, Lola and Adolfo go to a church for their children's school event. During the parade, Pedro not only continues to bully Tin and Tina, but he also disrespects the Holy Spirit, which the siblings consider a blasphemous act. During the whole performance, Lola remains worried about the twins' whereabouts, plus, we also don't see Pedro among the kids, which causes Pedro's mother to worry about her own child. Lola's worries swiftly vanish away when the siblings suddenly appear from the second story of the church, having been playing the organ throughout the performance. But the situation turns for the worse when the church door is flung open, and a severely injured Pedro collapses onto the floor. Filled with suspicion, Lola questions Tin and Tina about their possible involvement in Pedro's condition, but instead of giving a direct answer, the siblings simply say they will pray for Pedro. Lola's doubts get stronger when Pedro's mother calls her, and tells her that other kids saw Pedro with Tin and Tina shortly before the incident. Though not accusing them directly, she raises the possibility that the twins might have sought revenge for the bullying. Seeking more information about Tin and Tina, Lola visits sister Asuncion, and questions whether the siblings have been involved in any trouble before. But instead of addressing her concerns, sister defends the children, labeling them as pure and righteous. Here Lola expresses her disbelief in the existence of God, 
as she felt abandoned when her unborn babies were dying. Sister Asuncion then explains that God resides within their hearts, and they only need to seek Him. Filled with suspicion, Lola enters Tin and Tina's room at night with the intention of taking their Bible. However, what she discovers inside shocks her to her core. Within the pages of the Bible, she finds a disturbing sketch depicting the siblings engaged in cruel acts, such as slitting the dog's throat, and stoning Pedro, a form of punishment for his grave sin. Convinced of their involvement in Pedro's condition, Lola confides in her husband, but he dismisses her concerns, believing the sketch doesn't mean anything. In contrast, Lola is convinced that the children may not be as innocent as they appear, and they might be twisting the teachings of the Bible to justify their disturbing actions. Frustrated by her continuous allegations, he storms off to his room. Taking matters into her own hands, Lola locks away the Bible and crucifixes in a briefcase. She tells Tin and Tina in a very serious way that they can't open the box until they are older, and that there will be no religion in the house until then. Plus, they'll be sent back to the convent if they fail to comply. The next day, she discovers her hair falling out, and becomes convinced that Tin and Tina deliberately caused it as punishment. Despite her insistence, Adolfo remains unconvinced. Some days later, she reaches out to Pedro's mother to inquire about his well-being, only to receive the heartbreaking news of his passing. Overwhelmed with emotions, she seeks solace in Adolfo's arms, pleading with him not to leave her alone. As a pilot, Adolfo must calm Lola down, before departing for his flight to fulfill his duties. The next day, Lola wakes up to the devastating reality of being restrained to her bed by Tin and Tina. Tina tries to give her mother milk to make her less stressed about being pregnant, but Lola suspects it may be poisoned and refuses to drink it. Desperate to care for their new baby brother, the siblings resort to using a syringe. Fortunately, Lola manages to free herself, and she arms herself with a knife just as Adolfo arrives, and Tina claims that it was all part of a surprise plan, even though the twins have gone too far. Lola's water breaks all of a sudden, and the scene shifts to the hospital. After the baby is born, Adolfo suggests to Lola that they should start over as a family. But tensions rise once more when the twins and Adolfo express their desire to have the baby baptized. Lola firmly refuses, and states that she wants her child to have the freedom to choose his own religion when he gets older. After some time, while Lola gets distracted during cooking, the twins play a trick and hide the eggs, forcing Lola to go outside to fetch some from the backyard. They then attempt to discuss their plan of baptizing the baby with Adolfo, but he is too engrossed in his game to listen. Taking matters into their own hands, the damn twins grab the Bible and the baby, trying to perform the baptism themselves. Lola quickly rescues the baby, and she finally beats the twins, and blames Adolfo for neglecting his role as a father. When Adolfo finally realizes his mistake, he gets angry and decides to set fire to the Bible. The couple ultimately sends the twins back to the convent, as Lola had desired. During dinner, Lola still feels guilty about sending the twins back, thinking that she was a bad mother, but her husband doesn't want to talk about them anymore. Meanwhile, before going to bed, Tin and Tina attentively listen to Sister Asuncion, who quotes biblical verses emphasizing that God cannot be mocked, and that one will harvest what they sow. Lola's relief from her major life issue didn't bring her peace, as Adolfo's lack of support for her, and their child continues to distress her. As the couple is heading home from the restaurant, Lola asks the husband to slow down, right when two creatures unexpectedly dart across their path, but Adolfo skillfully avoids a collision. The stormy night adds to the eerie atmosphere when Lola discovers the front door ajar, and footprints leading into the hallway. Though she assumes they belong to Adolfo, he insists he never left the house. Seated beside Adolfo, Lola's intention to leave him becomes apparent as she begins removing her ring. Realizing this, Adolfo acknowledges his past failures as a father, but assures her of his transformation and commitment to safeguarding their family. Amid their conversation, the storm disrupts the TV antenna, prompting Adolfo to repair it to enable the restoration of TV channels. As he departs to fix it, Lola, moved by his words, decides to give their marriage another chance. As the night grows stranger, the baby's crying abruptly starts, and then stops on its own. 
power surges make the radio suddenly play poems that sound like the tunes Tin and Tina used to dance to. When the power goes out unexpectedly, Lola grabs a flashlight and ventures outside to investigate, only to be confronted by a horrifying scene. Adolfo is engulfed in flames. Before she can rush upstairs to rescue him, Adolfo falls on the floor, but remains alive. Lola frantically searches for a blanket to extinguish the fire, but realizes it's too late as Adolfo enters the living area, setting the entire place ablaze, just like the Bible. Distressed by the tragedy, Lola races upstairs to save her baby from the fire, but to her astonishment, the child is nowhere to be found. With no other choice, she turns to God, following Tin and Tina's teachings, wrapping a cloth around her face for protection. Just as she is about to lose consciousness, she hears her baby's cries, and miraculously locates him in the twins' room. After managing to escape the engulfed house, she collapses unconscious outside. The following morning, she wakes up in the hospital, where Sister Asuncion reassures her that her baby is safe and unharmed. Sadly, she delivers the news that the area was struck by intense lightning that resulted in Adolfo's tragic demise. When Lola asks about Tin and Tina's whereabouts, the sister explains that the siblings spent the entire night at the convent, and she personally woke them up this morning. Realizing that the twins were innocent all this time, Lola decides to re-adopt them, embracing them as her own children once again. This newfound understanding restores her faith in God, and as a symbol of her surrender and acceptance. Amen. 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 That's all the recap of Tin and Tina 2023. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.